Thanks, Goose. Badge, I have a pretty shaky history with flight sims. You know, the first game I ever played was on our first ever family computer, which ran entirely on DOS, and it was called Skyrunner. And this was my first experience of piloting an aircraft in a game. Basically, the aim was to, you know, fly this plane and shoot trees out of your path. And even then, I remember being pretty rubbish at it. So, for my triumphant and awkward return to the skies, I thought I'd try earning my wings on something a little bit more easygoing and free in case it all ended up being a wasted disaster I didn't want to blow my money on. Our gratis pick for this week is Microsoft Flight, which you can find on PC. Prepare for non-stop action. Well, contrary to Birds of Steel, it's clear that Microsoft Flight is on a bit of a budget and it's missing some polish here and there. Yeah, I mean, this is not a game for hardcore flight sim enthusiasts, but for beginners that are looking to learn the basics of flying with something that's a little bit more accessible, I think it's not a bad place to start. And also, unlike Birds of Steel, the voiceover here is pretty unpleasant to the ears. She's just a bit chatty. Yeah. Bit chat chatty McGee, right in your ear from the moment you start the engine. Okay, there are three keys to landing an airplane. Speed, speed, <laughs> and you guessed it, speed. My instructor always told me, you've got to slow down to go down. She'll set you up for your first takeoff, show you how to gain speed and altitude with a combination of aerodynamics and throttle. And how to ace your first landing. We're getting a little... Wait a second. I thought the ambulance was a nice touch. <laughs> you know, I, I found that woman really irritating at first as well, but she actually did a pretty good job of telling me what I was doing wrong as I was doing it, not just after it happened. So I did have some time to try and adjust. We're a little high, reduce the throttle. True to real life flying, landing is the trickiest part. And getting the right combination of speed and angle of approach isn't easy, but it's really satisfying when you master it. Hey, nice landing. She'll even help you out in early emissions if you forget something important. Throttle down to about 45% for our approach. Okay, I'll lower the landing gear. I liked how she talks about things like how the different planes handled and how some are more prone to bouncing when you land. In the free version of the game, you have two different planes to cruise around on the big island of Hawaii. The Stearman, for something a little old school, and the Icon, which is more futuristic. Additional plans can be purchased with Microsoft points as well as extra islands that you have to pay for with the Hawaiian Adventure Pack, which is to be expected. But there's enough free content here to get you started. Your instructor will run you through all the important checklists and cockpit controls, but there's also a really handy user interface to refer to as well that shows you all your speed, wind bearing, throttle, all of that kind of stuff. So it's not like one of those more hardcore sims where you have to just simply refer to your you know, actual altimeter on the plane's dash. Mm. But like any sim, you can just take your plane and, and fly around to get a feel for the aircraft, enjoying your aeronautical skills from various different camera views. more game elements to Microsoft Flight than your average sim. There's achievements to unlock a career mode and points for aerobatic tricks and I think this all adds to the appeal beyond simply simulating flight and to be honest if you really wanted the real deal experience I think you'd probably opt for something a little bit more technical than this. There's also a multiplayer mode where you can zip about the island of Hawaii with a friend. Here I come, here I come, here I come, here I come! Oh, <laughs> Hex, I expected us to have some pretty spectacular crashes there, but it was actually very hard to line our planes up. I know, I spent half my time just kind of flying around trying to find you without stalling my plane, and I, I think I'm just too crap at flying to actually fly in a straight line to actually hit you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Overall, I think the game looked pretty good for a flight sim, but I really do mean for a flight sim. While the planes are nicely polished with some great detail, close inspection of any of the scenery reveals everything that's pixelated, tiled and two-dimensional, and there's really no sense of the world being populated at all. I feel like this game should have come free with a copy of Windows 95. <laughs> it's, it's something wonderfully awkward about it, isn't there? That's what I love about it, though. I know some games aren't meant to, you know, they're not about the graphics, but I still think that it needed to look a bit better than this. Well, you know, I think for a free game, it's going to have its limitations. But, but then again, you know, they're obviously trying to make some money back with those paid add-ons, which aren't cheap, mind you. Yeah, I, I did get bored flying around in just my one little island in the free version. And I know you can buy other sets, but I also think that flight sim games especially should be more than just just a few islands. You should be able to explore the world, and you can't do that here. Mm. I haven't been to Hawaii, but these islands didn't really feel like Hawaii to me. Yeah, I think having a flight game that's based a little bit more around mission objectives, though, makes up for that a little bit. And if you're new to the world of flight sims, then this could be a great place for you to start, and at no cost to you. One more. Let's see if you can get around this. 